Hey, this is Eric. This will be a quick video looking at um, using JOJSON.io and GitHub to store your spatial data. So the first thing I'll ask you to do is go to JOJSON.io. Going to open this in a new tab. Um, right, so it's just JOJSON.io. That should work in your your in your browser. Made that a little bit bigger. So <clears throat> there are two ways you might go about making a map in GeoJSON.io. The first one would be, say, you're um, you're looking to just add some points that you have. Whoa, this is super blurry. Um, there it goes. say you had some points that you know where they are, um, you could really quickly go over here on the left and click draw a marker and say, oh, there's a thing. Over this way is another thing. And so on. And um, that could be your map. Or if you wanted to add data to these points, you could go up here to new column, create a column name. I'm just going to call it the name. This will be the name field for those points. And you can click these. You can see this is a table. This is the column. And each one of these is a row associated with these features. So I'm going to make this point one. And the next one, point two. Next one, point three. Great. OK. So now I have some really simple points. Uh, you could also draw polygons and lines. It's similarly really easy. Um, there. Okay. So if I wanted to edit or delete these, you can use these buttons. Um, I don't want my square. And you have to hit click save to finish deleting that feature. Okay. So this, so now you have a map. Great. Um, you can really quickly put this online in a shareable way by just going up here to the Save button. And you see that this weird string comes up. And it says anonymous slash blah, 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 blah. Um, what that is, if you click on this button right here, this is a link to your map. I'm going to open it in a new tab. Uh, so you can see that it created a map for us using exactly our features, our three points and our line. Uh, you can click on the points. And you can see that they have the name of point two, point one, point three. Um, you could embed this in a site if you wanted to. Here, let me make this a little bit bigger first. All right, you can embed this in your site or a link to it. You could share it with people. And this is a really nice, quick way to make a map and share it with people. You can also see the raw GeoJSON. Um, first of all, you can do that here. You can click and see exactly what the GeoJSON is that it generated. That can be nice um, just to get an idea of how the different feature types work such as line strings. Um, most of the time you're not going to need that unless, um, yeah, you're not going to need it very often. You can also do that over here on the view raw button. You can see exactly the same code. I'm going to go back. So um, you'll notice that when we clicked save over here on geojson.io, we ended up at a new website called GitHub Gist. And Gist is a place where you can post small snippets of code usually, or just text generally. And since GeoJSON files are text, you can share them here also. And it's nice that GitHub turns those text GeoJSON files into maps for you, makes them a, a whole lot more useful. And you'll see that you can make gists anonymously. 
that's really nice. Sometimes you don't want to create a new login. So, yeah. Um, okay. So that's one way you can make a map with GeoJSON.io. I'm going to go ahead and make a new map right here. And that just opens GeoJSON.io again with nothing in here. And I'm going to just drag over some of my data that I downloaded from CardoDB. You can see when I do that, it imports 66 features. You can see that the table is populated exactly as it was. Um, you can click on any of these and see the data for them. And you can also post this as a gist just by clicking save right there. And I can open that up. And look, there's my data on a map, and I can share it with people. Cool. So, um, I'd recommend that you try this out right now. Go ahead to jojson.io, make some features, and save your map, and make sure that you can find it on GitHub's gist. All right. Hopefully that worked out all right for you. So here are some examples of like of cities and other institutions using GitHub to share their geodata. In this case, this is Philadelphia sharing their geo their data on farmers markets. The tiles are coming in kind of slowly right now. Yeah. So this is nice. You can come in here, you can click this raw button and and you can take you can take the data by just copying and pasting it. You could go back here and um that's probably the most the quickest way to get the data is go ahead and download it. It's the easiest way, but there are more useful ways to get the data and edit it and share it. And I'm going to go over that really quickly right here. So um, if you go to github.com and create an account, that's github.com. And I already have an account, but if you go to github.com, you'll see uh, exactly this screen. Pick a username, your email address, and create a password and come back here once you've done that. All right, once you've done that, go to this URL, github.com slash ebrowsford slash geojson hyphen examples. I'm going to open it myself so you can see what I'm talking about. And uh, all this is is a few GeoJSON geo files that I created. Um, and we're going to link up our GeoJSON.io with our GitHub accounts and then come in here and, and get our own copies of this data and then make changes to the data and look at it. So, so once you go to this URL, geojson.examples, and you're logged in to your GitHub account, go ahead and click the fork button. Fork button, this will create a new copy in your GitHub account. I've already done this. I have two accounts, and I'm using this one for the video. And you can see that once you fork that repository, that set of files, then it has your name slash the name of the repository, and it reminds you that it was forked from this other repository. So you can always go back to the original one right here. All right? So you've created a GitHub account. 
and then you went to this URL. The URL is a repository, which is just a set of files, and you clicked fork. So you should have your own repository now. Okay, so now I'd like you to go back to geojson.io and click the login button. I'm going to do this too, but you can see it happening in the animation. Go to login, and then it says, are you sure you want geojson.io to know about your GitHub account? And you say, yes, authorize that. Okay, so I'm in geojson.io over here, and I'm clicking the login button, and it already knew about me, so it, it just automatically logged me in. You can see that my username is here. So now that you are logged into GitHub and you have geojson.io so that it knows about your GitHub account, go ahead and um, open the repository that you just forked. I'm going to walk through this over here. So to open it, you go to open. It's the folder. And you have a few possibilities up here. I'm going to click on GitHub, and then my username, and then the name of the repository. You should only have one if you just created a GitHub account, otherwise find GeoJSON examples, and then master. Okay, so now you have these four files, they all have GeoJSON in them. And I'm going to click on the Queen's one. And this is just a set of, this is the excerpt of lots from 596 Acres taken on February 18th for Queens. And you can see the points here. And you can see that I've also messed them up a bit in my account. So, so now you can see you can create data or you can upload your own data or you can go in through GitHub, fork somebody's account, and then open it up right here. And then you can still make all the changes you want to because this is in your account. See, I'm clicking delete, I'm deleting, and I can click save, and then they're not there anymore. And then I go up here and click save. And remember when we clicked save the first time, it just did it automatically. When you're working with a GitHub repository, it's going to want a commit message. So I'm going to say, I deleted some lots. Click commit. And once you do, it says that those changes were committed. And I'm going to open them. And you can see, oh, yeah. Um, Here's the commit message, deleted some lots, that's what I said. And you can click this button right here. And you should see that um, you can actually see the lots that I deleted. The red means that they were deleted. The blue um, doesn't mean anything in this case. But if you added things, they would probably be, they would be green. Um, if you change things, they should show up as yellow. Uh, so this is the highlight view. If you go to the revision slider right here, then what's on the right side of the slider is the current view, and the left side is the old view. So as you go back and forth, you can see which ones got deleted. Neat, right? So why don't you try this out if you weren't trying it out along with me. Go ahead and open up that repository, open up one of the files, make some changes, save them back, and then check out the commit. And then um, if you have a hard time getting to the commit, this is another way that you could do it. So you could go to your login on GitHub and find your repository, and then come in here like this. So 
why don't I do that? So I went to github.com while I'm signed in. Let me make that bigger. And I, on the right over here is are my repositories. I'm going to click GeoJSON examples. I'm going to go to commits to see all of the changes that have been made and find my most recent one and click here. And it should be the same exact view. All right, uh, that's all I have for adding data with geojson.io and GitHub. Hope that helps, but let me know if there are any questions. Bye.